Hey everyone and welcome back to another chatbot building tutorial. This is for the AI personal trainer sweatbot, a really, really niche bot, but people keep on talking about it. So here's how to build one. The reason this one is so big, you can see if we have like seven workflows over here is because this is not really like a chatbot. This is more of an app because don't get me wrong. You can build an AI personal trainer very easily. Just finding the knowledge base, that's a bit hard. It took me a while, but the knowledge base is the hardest part when building an AI personal trainer. However, if you just want to do an easy AI personal trainer, um, it's pretty easy to do. But when you do it the way that I did it here, where you every user can like save their workout plans and they can uh, modify their workout plan, build their own workout plans, it's much harder, which is what this video is about. I'm just going to do like a quick once over everything. I'm not going to hammer on everything. I'm not really going to pause. So you can pause on your own. All right, so this down here, all of this is nothing new. This is just our login system. And here we have an account registration system, but that's for another video. We're just doing Sweatbot today. So when we start off here, we say, hello, I'm Sweatbot. And you see our different options is linked to different places. The conversation loop is right here. I'm gonna explain how this stuff works, but basically we have a variable called lost location. And basically, when we don't want to have five different conversation loops because the the user can ask a question at any point in this entire bot so when they come into this loop we want to take them back to where they were so here you see here their last location is main then we take them to exit what is that exit one and then exit one goes to wherever and if they were in exercise proposal and they come to the conversation and they exit again we take them to exit what is that exit two. So that is a very cool system, um, but I'm not going to dive too deep into that. As you see, we have our plan options and, and here we get our users current workout plans. And then we put those workout plans in an array. Well, we put the names specifically into an array, as you can see here, and we just put another one called back so that if the user wants to go back. What this does, and it gives our user the first option to choose which workout plan they'd like to work in or edit. And here we ask them and we display our array variable. And this is a pretty important part right here. We assign workflow uh, user dot workout plan choice. And then if the user, this is a very, very cool little piece of work right here. If they, uh, if event dot preview, the previous message in the, in the emulator is equal to the first workout plan, uh, then it's workout plan one. And this, this variable allows us to basically not have to code everything 300 times. Like it's really, really useful. You're going to see it all over the, all over the bot, you're gonna see us using this variable. It's very important. And here we have uh, probably the most important code of this entire thing, it's the format. Because our workout plan is an object, it looks really, really jumbled and all over the place. It's very hard to read. This code is just meant to format it so that it's very uh, easy to read because normally an object, it just looks confusing with all the brackets and all the qu quotation marks. It looks messy, so we format it so that it's easier to read. And then we just display it to the user as formatted plan. And then here are our first few options. We have generate an AI one, change the name, edit the plan, ask a question, we'll go back. So let's go handle generate AI plan first. So here is the most important part. So you see this limit prompt basically because this bot i want this bot to be like as self-sufficient as possible so basically users have let's say in my table here you guys can see that users get uh, a default 50 uh, 50 prompts per month it, it all connects with the pricing i haven't really figured the pricing out yet what i'm to do but um let's say they get 50 and then every single time they use an ai feature he needs to minus one from that, uh, from their total allowed prompts. And here, basically, we just check if the user has no prompt left, then we just say your AI prompt quota has been exceeded. Here, our first question is how many days would you like your workout plan to be? And we have a code configurator. So if you wanna copy this, it basically just makes sure that the input is between zero and 10. And here we have our, our question that we're asking, that is uh, the criteria. So now how we actually, so how we actually give our question to our LLM is like this. So we say the you can see a GPT prompt. It say create a let's say five the variable that was saved what was num day. So it's a create a five day workout plan with five exercises per day. Give him a recommendation of the every exercise how many sets and reps should be done. Example six sets ten reps. And then we say what uh, the 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 person's criteria was. So let's say like you know the default one I'm a rugby player blah blah blah. 
then it says create a five day workout plan yada and then it says i'm a rugby player and then they give the criteria at the end and we get good results every single time with this prompt then we increment our prompt number we just say uh, user dot organized data dot prompt amount dot uh, zero uh, sorry minus minus that just means minus one from the current amount and that is that prompt amount that you guys saw in the table just to make sure that they haven't exceeded their prompt quota this is just an api call it's nothing new you've probably seen this about 100 times by now um it's just to stack ai it's, it's what we use as our element now here we organize that data from uh, our llm into an editable object because now we're doing it the other way you know previously we took it from an object to a string now we're taking it from a string to an object and this was very difficult to do um i am not some coding expert i'm not some genie this took me a while to figure out, but basically we split them into days, we organize them um, because the thing is we want our users to be able to edit their workout plans. This is not just some boring speak to a bot. This is actually like you can edit your own workout plans like an app. And that's my vision that I had for Sweatbot. I didn't just want it to be just talking to a bot and it telling you, yeah, this is good. This is good. I wanted to really be like, I wanted to have the best of both worlds. You can edit your plans, you can make your own plans with the assistance of AI. And here we just update our record to make sure that the prompt amount reflects in our table. And here we display our workout plan to the user. So we said program pro program proposal. This is done because this backslash NN, if you hit just um, uh, enter enter to just like two breaks, it doesn't show up, um, which is why I have to do this. It sound it looks pretty pointless, but it actually does do something. These backslash in the ends, um, they are breaks. Um, they are what makes it just easier to read so that it isn't like all connected and mushed together. It's all like, it's all very spaced out and looks good. And here we just present our plan to the user and we give them a few options. So basically exercise change this workflow here and workout plan generated are very much the same, meaning that they have quite a few of the same things. So we don't need to cover both of them. So first we'll cover adding an exercise. So first we're gonna ask them to which day would you like to add an exercise? Now this is total days and this will basically display all the days that the user's workout plan has. And the way that we do this, is just like this. Don't ask me how it works. I did it one night and um, yeah, basically, uh, if if it has oh it's very cool actually this is a pretty cool trick I wanted to do it from day one to day ten but then if the code read true on the first one it would continue so the way that you do it do it inversely you start day ten and it continues till it's true if you're a coder you'll know exactly what I did and how it's pretty smart but I'm not tooting my own horn it's just it's just an idea I had and then basically if uh, well it, it, we don't even need an if basically it will always remove rest and empty because if you add a new day then um and and it has nothing inside of it it will automatically have rest or empty depending on what you chose in it um but when you add an exercise obviously it's not empty anymore it's not rest day anymore so we need to remove that but we just say to always remove it because nothing goes wrong if there's nothing to remove coders will know what i mean now we're actually adding an exercise so just what exercise would you like to add we will cover getting an ai recommendation just now but basically we ask the question and then we ask how many reps and sets would you like to do now this is our first ai card or ai task card and here we have your personal trainer your job is to write down how many sets and reps your client wants to do on an exercise always say the sets first then the reps and the, basically how we did this how it's so consistent this took a lot of work but basically zero temperature you want it consistent as possible 3.5 turbo you don't need four version one because two is still in beta so i'm not going to bother with that and task examples this this took really a long time because the bot just never understood let's say you like say okay instead of saying i think three reps and eight sets are good if you th if you said i think eight sets and three reps is reps is good it would be like what do you mean like i don't understand what you mean so i have to give it all these examples of what it could possibly be asked and then finally i got consistently i now it works 100 percent of the time now this is a card that is designed to add what we just said that reps and sets and the exercise into one variable and then add that one variable to our, our workout plan so here we say exercise add meaning that is the final thing that we add it's exercise and then just a space plus reps plus sets then it would look like a bench press and then six sets eight reps and here we update it in our table just and we use a bunch of spread operators to just make sure we don't edit any of our other uh, things in our object now if you want an ai exercise recommendation once again we double check that you actually 
have the ability to, you haven't exceeded your prompt quota, we get your exercise criteria, like what do you want to actually do? Then we do the same thing, we generate a GPT prompt, meaning that we make a variable for what you want to say to ChatGPT. So first off, is um, our GPT prompt is just what you said and then recommend only one exercise. Because I have this problem, it would constantly re recommend me like five exercises, it would be quite annoying. So you just specifically say recommend me only one exercise. Then we increment our prompt amount, uh, minus minus, to so minus one. Then we do our API call just like before. And then, I don't know why, but the bot always responds with day one and then your exercise we use. So we just have to manually remove that. <laughs> I don't know why it does it, it just does. But it isn't a problem because I just manually remove it. Right, that's basically the bare bones of how we add an exercise. Now for removing an exercise, it's actually quite a bit easier. So we're down here now, we're gonna create a total days just like we did before, just so the user has the, op has the option to choose where they'd like to remove from. Then chosen day, which day would you like to remove? And then which exercise would you like to remove? And here we see that our options are basically the workouts inside of the workout plan. But we don't actually need to convert this to an array because it's actually already an array, which is pretty cool. First off, you have to find the index of uh, the exercise that the user just said. Index of exercise, nothing special. And then you just remove it. So basically, if it's not like an invalid number, then it just removes splice, just remove from, from an array. All right, that is basically most of the exercise. Now, how we add a rest day is very simple as you can see here. Just go in. So basically, if there are no days inside of our workout plan, then it should automatically add day one. Because what this code does, it basically adds a day after the day you chose. However, if there's no days, the code won't run because it's just not it's just not designed to do that. So basically, it's very much it's so much easier to just do this. If there are no days, just automatically add one day. First off, we, as usual, create our total days um, array so that our user has the option to pick after which day they'd like to add one. Then it finds the index of what they just said, and then it pluses one to that index. Because remember, we are adding a day after a day. So we first find the day, then we plus one, and that's the day that we add. And then we just add a new key to it that basically just says rest because obviously they added a rest day. And that is literally all this code has to it. And then depending on if it's workout plan one, workout plan two, or workout plan three, we update it accordingly. Now, when we remove a day, it's kind of the same thing. First off, we find the key of the day that I'd like to remove. So this is just some more total days type of code. It just stores all the days into basic numbers. This is just some total days sort of code. There's nothing special here. We've done this quite a few times by now. Then we ask them what they would like to remove. Then we find the index of what they would like to remove. And then we just delete that day. However, now we're kind of stuck with a problem. So let's say you had a workout plan from day one, day two, day three, day four. Okay, now you removed day two. Now your code is saying day one, day three, day four, but that's completely wrong. So we first need to restructure it like so. Basically, it just takes it all and it puts it into alpha numerical order. And then the exact same thing, we save our workout plans. Now for the name change, it's as usual, it's very simple. So first off we ask, okay, what is your new name gonna be? And then depending on what you say, well, depending on, see here it comes into play again, workout plan choice. If it's number three, we take you here, but they're all the same. Basically, it's very simple. You just say user organized data, workout plan one, name, event preview. That just means update the workout plan dot name um, to what was previously said on the emulator because that's what they want the new name to be. Exercise change, as I said, there's literally nothing new here that isn't really a workout plan generator, so we're gonna skip this. We already covered conversation loop. Uh, actually, we didn't, so we'll do that really quick. So basically, if you just wanna ask a question to the bot, just have a conversation with the bot. First off, we check that you actually can. API call because you already asked your question. Minus prompt amount, updates the record. And there we go. This is how just how you uh, have a conversation with the bot. And here we have just a small fallback. Basically, if the bot doesn't have any response, um, we just generate this quick little, um, your job is to tell the user you were unfortunately not able to give them an answer. Because I don't just want to say every single time, sorry, I didn't know your answer. I want to give it like a personalized, sorry, I didn't know what you mean. Now for our last one, it's called add day. It's literally the exact same as rest day, but instead of adding a the word rest to um, our, our empty day, we add the word empty instead of rest because they, add, they want a blank day. They don't want rest day. The difference between a blank day and a rest day is a blank day 
you add with the intention of adding exercises to it. Now, when we email our plan to a user, it's once again, it's a very simple. First off, we convert it into a string, like so, because obviously you're gonna be emailing it to them, you can't email them an object. So you convert it to a string, then you ask for their email address, then you send them the workout plan via Zapier, then you tell them it's been emailed, then you show them their workout plan and they can continue with the conversation. And this is what our user table looks like. First of all, we just have usernames. I'm just obviously gonna delete this stuff. We have our passwords. We have whether they are blocked or not. That's part of the security system. And here we have workout plan one. I'm just gonna resize this now that I'm here. Workout plan two and workout plan three. Email and the prompt amount. Thank you so, so much guys for watching this video. I really hope you guys can now build your own AI personal trainers just with this general framework I've given you. I've currently got quite a few cool things in the works besides my videos. I'm gonna have um, basically courses for bot press where I'm going to teach you and work with you guys to show you guys how to build these kind of bots because it's very cool to like watch these videos but I promise you it's so much more useful when you think like an actual expert and you don't even need help anymore. You take the initiative. You don't just follow my initiative, you take your own you build your own cool stuff. If that sounds interesting to you, you want to get better in BotPress, you can check the first link in the description. It's going to be a link to my website. It's still not up currently. However, you, if you want to be notified for when it is up, my next video will explain that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you like this kind of content and you want to get smarter in BotPress. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.